Today, we'll be reviewing the latest Hera 5.1 update release on the elementary OS. Hey guys, it's Joel here with Make Tech Easier. Elementary OS has a reputation for elegant minimalism and user friendliness. Enjoying a strong fan base, its latest released Hera 5.1 update has been out for a while now. But the company has recently made an interesting move in one of its updates. In this elementary OS review, as we put Hera through its paces, we'll explore what's new, what to expect if it's your first time using the OS, and how it stacks up against rival desktops. Let's get started. As this is a minor release, changes to elementary are mostly evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Nevertheless, Hera comes with two big changes. Firstly, users can now install updates without administrator permission. This has certainly made it more convenient for the user, though many will think it's a bad move. The second big change, and the one that resulted in the previously mentioned change, is the use of Flatpak apps as the default. The reasoning is that Flatpak apps are sandboxed, so there is no real need for administrator permission to install an update here any further. Head to the website and you'll be presented with a kind of paywall, but don't panic, it's a pay what you want deal. The price can be $0 if you're type or merely elementary curious. There's one ISO file, which is 64-bit only, and works perfectly under any USB boot creator. It actually booted on every machine tested, which is great. As elementary is based on Ubuntu, the live USB follows the same desktop-based installer structure, so you can try out the OS before installing it. It leaves an excellent first impression, from icon sizes and fonts to carefully chosen wallpapers. Elementary's creators have gone to painstaking efforts to make sure everything is as simple, elegant and pleasant as possible. As for the installer itself, it's the usual Ubuntu fare. There are no nasty surprises in store, and you can do other things while Elementary installs itself. Boot times are quick, and it's not long until the desktop is fully loaded. If you've never used Elementary before, expect a chiefly Mac-inspired interface with a large icon dock interface instead of a Windows-style smart button and taskbar. The dock hides when not in use and is used to launch and minimize apps. The dock acts as a central focus point and is intended to be customized by the user, removing any apps that are not regularly used and adding your own regularly used apps from the applications menu. Exploring the rest of the OS, the team's design philosophy is apparent throughout. Minimal documentation, immediate usability and restricted configuration. The system settings stand out in particular, easy to navigate but definitely sparse. The app store is split into two sections, one for getting new apps and the other for applying updates. It's very simple and easy to use. It was lacking a little in choice back in 5.0, but now it's greatly improved thanks to those additional Flatpak packages. However, it's when you press the Windows key that elementary really comes to life. Behind the simple GUI lies a powerful set of keyboard shortcuts that work in combination with a clever virtual desktop system. When it has just started, elementary has a single empty desktop, but then you start opening full single windows in new desktops, flicking quickly between them with two buttons, and the whole experience becomes incredibly satisfying. The obsessive compulsive neatness comes into play when you close those windows and find the now unused desktops have been deleted behind you and there is just the one desktop remaining. Sometimes elementary's stripped back philosophy goes a little too far for its own good. I appreciate that restricting configuration helps in not overwhelming the user, but at some point most users will probably need to change something that's not there. Also, plugging in a USB drive doesn't bring up any kind of auto mount prompts. You need to open it manually in the file manager. Then there's the issue of minimizing windows. This is easily done either through the dock or by the shortcut key, but it's not obvious to all users and isn't even listed in elementary's keyboard shortcut screen. Whether or not a minimize button should be there by default is something you can decide, but elementary tweaks which lets you add a minimize button should probably be installed by default. Furthermore, some libraries and packages that would normally be included with other distros 
aren't installed, which genuinely gets in the way of basic operations. If you want to add a repository, you need to install software-properties-common, and that requires Googling. The elementary ISO is only 1.48 gigabytes, so it could be worth adding a little flab for some it just works convenience, you know what I mean? Overall, Elementary OS is a gorgeous product that will leave an excellent lasting impression and will likely win over new Linux users. Nevertheless, there are situations when all this tasteful minimalism may become a hindrance. Sometimes elegance needs to make way for brute force. And if you have a desktop PC and rely on heavy customization, you're probably better off with something like KDE, MATE or M-A-T-E, or XFCE. However, on portable computers, this system is right at home. There are times when it genuinely feels like you're using the future of Linux. I'm personally using KDE Neon on my main workstation, but when I'm on the go, I use Elementary on an ultra mobile PC. The two machines complement each other nicely and together they make for a powerful and satisfying combination. Is Elementary 2 Mac-like for your taste? Check out our list of the best Linux distros for Windows users, or maybe you want to see the competition. Then check out our list of five of the best Linux distributions for Mac users. Well, that's it from me. As always, if you love tech as much as we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the bell on, and you'll be notified by our latest and greatest tech-savvy videos. See you next time.